What up, what up, welcome back to the channel. I'm Modi J and we are locked in. This is day three of our five day recap of the cage on Netflix. The last thing we seen was a draw between Taylor and Ibrahim. And of course, Taylor is excited about this because a draw is better than a loss. You never want to lose in anything, but I'll take a draw. But then we get a phone call from his mother. Now she doesn't say anything, but we know it's from mom and we seen a black eye on her and we have to figure out what the hell happened to her. And that's where we're at on episode three. But before we jump into this, if you like drama, you like that grit and grind to make something out of nothing, MMA fighting, well, this might be the show for you on Netflix. Again, it's only five episodes. But if you like this kind of content, breakdowns and recaps, then hit your subscribe button, turn on your notification bell, so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. We're on that road to 75,000 subscribers. So I appreciate each and every one of you. But let's go ahead and jump into it. Episode three of The Cage on Netflix. Starting the episode off, we go to the house. His mother, Isabella, and Regis are there. She has a black eye, and Taylor's trying to figure out what happened. Well, the story that they're saying is Regis, when he bet at that money, once they seen that Taylor didn't throw it in the second round, they came over and they terrorized. Now, I guess Regis wasn't there because they attacked her, but I guess this is still showing a sign that you need to pay us our money. So Taylor's hearing this and he's hurt because he really wants to be a fighter, but he also wants to help his mother out. Taylor goes to the gym to talk to Dallas and says, listen, I need some money. He's letting everyone know I need some money for my mother. I got to figure out some fights. Now, we just had that draw. That was a little bit of money, but I need something else. And Dallas tells him straight up, the way to make money in UFC, you have to be a star. You have to make your money outside the ring because these fighters aren't getting that much in the ring, even though they're having huge pay-per-views. So this is letting Dallas know we might have to take some alternative measures, go find some other fights. But that's what Taylor wants to get out here because he wants to protect his mother. Dallas gets Taylor in the ring because we have to train. We want to make some money. We want some other fights. We got to train. Well, Elena comes in and she says, what's up to Dallas? What's up, coach? She looks at him and she just daps up our boy Taylor and goes and gets to sparring. Now, Taylor, he's not focused because they just had that kiss after her fight. And now she's acting like she doesn't even know who he is. And Dallas is noticing this. So he kicks him and makes him fall down. Like you need to get focused. If you want to get in these matches and win, then you need to stay focused no matter what's going on. When you get in this cage, you have to leave that at the door. Now we find out that Nico, his friend is actually on some kind of doping agent, some kind of performance enhancer. Now he's saying it takes six weeks to get out of your system. He's trying to figure out what edge can he have, but he's also telling Nico to stop that. Now, Nico hears this and he sees that Taylor is blowing up. He's viral. So he tells him everyone in the gym sees you trying to talk to Elena, but Elena is not going to mess with any gym guys. She's worried about her reputation and she's a fighter. So you should leave her alone. Plus, I know from experience. So Nico is basically saying, I tried to talk to her and she turned me down. You leave her alone. And no, I'm not just because she shot you down. Don't mean she's going to shoot me down. So now that everyone knows that Taylor is trying to fight because his mom owes $40,000, there's a tournament. Now this tournament is vigorous. You're going to have to get in there and it's nonstop fighting. But the winner of this tournament wins $100,000. So Taylor and Nico, they hear this. But I was like, why do you guys want to know about that? Uh, because we're about to enter into it. We need that $100,000. Taylor goes to talk to Dallas and says, Dallas, I got to holler at you real quick. I know we got to fight in December, but that's too far away. I need money now. And Dallas is trying to explain to him, this is MMA, man. This isn't just going to run, racing each other 100 yards. No, 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 no. You got to be mentally, physically emotionally spiritually focused on this you can't just go jump into a tournament where you might have to fight three or four people in one night plus they're going to outweigh you but dallas is like you need to take a step back taylor you're good but you're not great you're not even above average at this point because dallas has been training with him and he knows i've been calling boss dallas because he's like a maverick the way he's trying to make this work for Taylor. He's trying to get Taylor to understand that I've been doing this, but boss comes to a realization that Taylor isn't going to back down because he's doing this for his mother and you got to make some money anyway, especially if someone's assaulting your mom and you don't know who it is. You got to get out here and get it. After the training, Taylor walks Elena to her car, but he starts asking a couple of questions. Now these questions are pertaining to her 
and why she doesn't date any of the fighters. Because remember, Nico had already told him, oh yeah, she'll shoot you down. But she says the reason she doesn't mess with any fighters is because of their egos and turning them down, they might turn into someone else. So basically, she just wasn't interested in Nico. But as I always say, just because she's not interested in one person, don't mean she's not interested in you. But she makes it clear that nine times out of 10, she's not gonna talk to a fighter. Boss has Taylor in here training, but he's like, we're gonna cut it early. We're gonna cut it early. That's it, we're good. Taylor's saying, no, I got a lot of energy. Well, Boss had a surprise for him. You remember he went out onto that talk show? Well, these UFC legends, they're coming in here and they're actually gonna train him. They're gonna train him on his positioning. They're gonna train him on some grappling. They're really trying to help him go to the next level, especially if he's about to get in this tournament. Now, remember this tournament, he's gonna be fighting up at least 10 pounds minimum. And in fighting, one pound can change everything. All right, tournament time. We make it to Warsaw, Poland. Now I've been to Warsaw, Poland, but I went in the winter months. Let me tell you, it gets cold there, but it's a nice city. And so is Luz. They're in here and they're training. KSW, this tournament, it's all in one night, meaning you fight, you win, you fight again. You fight, you lose, you go home. They back here, they training. You can see that Nico, he's looking a little jealous, but we're all here, we're all focused. And boss, he has to get Taylor's head in the game. Now, before the match starts, he tells Nico to turn his phone on. And anyone that messages him, he trusts Nico enough, because this is like a brother to him, to message them to let them know what's going on behind the scenes and letting them know that Taylor is focused and he's prepared. Now, boss, he's looking and he's saying, man, something ain't right about this kid, Nico. All right, it's time for the first match. And the first match is against a Russian and he got him by at least 15 to 20 pounds. Everyone's like, damn, man, these dudes, they kind of heavy to be trying to go against Taylor, but Taylor's got to get in there. And the game plan is to let it come to him. One, because You'll be quicker than them, but they got that weight and that strength. So let the match come to you. And just as the game plan was written out, the Russian attacks Taylor, and it's a flying knee to the nose. First round knockout. So this match only went on for like 10 seconds. Taylor is like, woo. I'm looking at it like, damn, boy, that's a horrible way to go out. As soon as you rush, you get hit with a knee and you're down for the count. Guess what? There ain't no count. It's over with. Knockout. After the fight, Taylor's like, I did what you said, coach. I let it come to me, man. Whew. I ain't gonna lie. I thought he was gonna get me, man. He had me by like 20 pounds. But when they get in the back, he's got to get prepared for his next fight. But he asked for his phone from Nico. Boss is saying, nah, man, you don't need that right now. Nico says, well, it looks like it must be important. Someone's hitting you up. The hate that Nico is spewing because Atlanta is actually messaging him. Oh, good fight. I wish you luck. Now it has Taylor looking... Nico, were you hating the whole time? What, what are you doing going through my messages, man? I said just reply to anything important, not just read through my conversations. The next fight is against another Russian. This time, 25 pound difference. He actually trains with Khabib. So, you know, anything about Khabib, he wrestles bears. These Russians, they differ. Well, good thing we got boss in our corner because that's all Taylor appears to need is to have boss in the corner and we can make it through anything. Once the match starts, <laughs> well, boss can do nothing for you. They got the guy behind boss making him sit down every time he stands up. And this Russian is applying that pressure, trying to make him tap out. He's giving Taylor the business. Now Taylor is holding on as much as he can, but remember, he's in a weight class that he is not built for. He's around 170, these guys are 195, almost 200 pounds. Well, Taylor lost first round. The second round, he's coming out swinging. I'm talking about he's doing all he can because you don't want to get to that third round where you're down 2-0 because you're going to need a knockout, a tap out, submission, whatever. You're going to need somebody to throw something in the ring and stop the fight. Well, the second round, he's on it. He gets him on the ground. He's attacking them. I'm talking about unleashing punches. I never seen Taylor this dedicated before in my life, but he needs this $100,000. Well, Taylor's doing his thing in this third round. He actually gets a knockdown. We like, okay, cool, we got it. It's good, it's good. But as the time is going down, these five minute three rounds, three rounds, oh my goodness, it's going down. Well, 
It's getting closer and closer to the end of the round. And it looks like this Russian is about to choke Taylor out. All Taylor has to do is hold on, but it's easier to hear someone yell, hold on just 10 seconds while you getting choked out and you can barely breathe trying to get saved by the bell. You hear the whole crowd, five, four, three, two, one. The bell goes off and let's see who wins this match. Well, Taylor was getting choked out, but he held on. Boss did what he could do. He said, hold on just 10 seconds. Taylor, he survived it. He ends up winning the next match. And now we 2-0 oh in this tournament. We got one more to go. $100,000 is knocking at the door. We got to figure out if we going to win this money, how we going to, well, we got to give Mama some money. But Taylor makes it to the next round. Now, after a choking out like that, boss is telling them, listen, Taylor, you can't go on anymore, man. You can barely breathe. You can barely stand. We had to carry you up out of here. I don't know, Taylor. We're going to go get the paramedics. Go tell somebody he can't go on. Now, of course, Taylor's been working his butt off. We just won two. We just got to win the next one. The $100,000 is right there at the end of the tunnel. Now, will I win? I don't know, but I have to try. We made it this far. But Boss is doing what's the best for the fighter. Now, we all been looking at Nico sideways, but one thing he does do is motivate Taylor. You can win this, man. Go out there, dog. Forget what they talking about. You know what you're doing this for. You're doing this for your mother. You need to get up and get out and do something. Now, this could be him being a little bit jealous and trying to get Taylor knocked out, get him sent up out the way because he's also a fighter and he wants an opportunity. Or he could just be a good friend, a good brother, and trying to encourage and motivate Taylor to get up and go do this match. A lady representative for the fight, she comes in, y'all got 10 minutes. At first, Boss is saying, no, nah, we're not going to do it. Taylor said, okay, we'll be ready. And he already told Boss, I need this money. At this point, I'd rather die in the ring than go home empty-handed, Boss. Let me fight. Let me fight. And Boss is like, all right, if we're going to do it, then we got to do it right. This is the last fight. And this gentleman got about 40 pounds on Taylor. So we just kept increasing, increasing the first one, 20 pounds, 25 pounds, almost 30 pounds, and now almost 40 pounds. Man, this is going to be a tough one for Taylor. And remember, he just got choked out. So we don't know how much of his brain is still there, how long of a recovery he really needed. We just know he's in this ring and he has 100,000 reasons to fight for his life. All right. At first, he got Taylor. But that was expected. We already knew this guy was going to be throwing his weight around in his power. Now, he got Taylor on the run against the cage. But Taylor's getting some punches in. Taylor's getting a couple of kicks. We doing what we got to do to survive. This is where that quickness of him being 40 pounds lighter. Uh, uh, uh. Stick and move, baby, like an Ali. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But it looks like Taylor's starting to take command of this fight. Right when we were thinking the $100,000, I was already counting what I was going to do with my part of the money. 100, 200, 300. Boom! Big elbow. Straight knockout to Taylor. Oh my goodness. It's devastating. Taylor is on the ground. His body locks up. His hands are stuck in the air. Ding, ding. It's over. It's over. Taylor hits the ground. He even gets another punch in on Taylor when his head bounces up off the mat. It's ugly out here, people. Oh my goodness. We've never seen anything like this. The power. The power. Brutal knockout. Oh my goodness. We don't know if Taylor's going to recover from this or not. Taylor's on the ground. There was one more punch. It's over with. It's over with. We got to drag him out of here. Someone get the paramedics. Someone call 911, please. Taylor gets KO'd by an elbow. Oh my goodness. That was devastating. We were thinking that Taylor was about to go home with this 100000 But now, he's going home with a concussion. And the last thing we see is them giving him oxygen in the ring. It was a good run. But Taylor, unfortunately, didn't make it. Didn't receive $100,000. Don't pass go. Don't collect $200. Go straight to jail. Because this man, he almost killed Taylor in that ring. All right, there you go. Episode three of the cage. Let me know what you think about that knockout. If you got knocked out like that in the ring, I know this is your profession, 
are you ever getting back in that ring? Are you thinking maybe this isn't the sport for me? Maybe I just need me a desk job. Let me know what you think. I'm Odij. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for episode four, day four of the five day recap of the cage on Netflix. I'm Odij. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.